Here we are again, everyone, for my favorite episode of the month with our in-house astrologer, Chiron Yang. Welcome, Chiron. Welcome, welcome. I am so happy to be here and uh, to unpack what's coming on. Yes, it's going to be pretty dynamic, and I cannot believe what you and I were talking before this is that like the the year's flying we're already in november we're in the last quarter of the um year so this if this is your first time tuning into this episode this is our beginning of the month episode where we come together and usually it's with tom but he's not here tonight he's playing the drums so he's out in his gig and uh, so it's chiron ying and i we get together and we share about what's the energy patterns because tom and i have a calendar that we work with every month what's going on energetically, and then Chiron shares what's going on astrologically. So if you um, are new to this, please make sure one thing I always like to say is make sure you have a pen and paper somewhere, because I also do. So when Chiron goes through and talks about specific dates, you can access the calendar that will give you the free PDF down in the um, show notes, and you can circle, you can check out the, the energies and the month and really get a good heads up for what's coming in November. So we're both excited to be here, right, Chiron? Yeah, totally. Um, there's also one thing to mention is that I don't know the energy calendar before coming into this. Basically, I'm going into this dark. So we we had never had any prior discussion or conversation about this. And it's just so interesting to see the two different um, techniques and modalities merge together into one, offering a wider and bigger perspective of like what the energy is it's about to happen for us. Absolutely. And ditto with astrology. I'm like, you know, I mean, I hear things, but I'm like, I don't know. So <laughs> until we get together, and plus, I think I'm kind of like, I don't really want to know what's coming. So until I, you know, Chiron, we have this episode and it's like, okay, now I got the, and, and I like, and I like your interpretation too, because as we know, you do evolutionary astrology and there's all kinds of different perspectives out there, but I really, um, I really love evolutionary astrology and the, the, the format that you bring forward. So that in itself really helps me hone in on what's coming and the energy. So I really, first off though, I wanted to kind of go back a little bit to October and <laughs> just want to tune in a bit, Chiron, before we head into this next November is, you know, the energy that we had and some of the things, and we don't have to dive too much into it, but I want to, I would like you to share a little bit about like, how did October go for you? And the, the key word of October was current. And we talked a lot about Pisces energy flowing the river we you know we did and if you want to check out that episode you can go back and, and check that out from last month because there's some good there's some good tidbits in there too even if it's the month later but i'd love to hear from your perspective and then i'll be happy to share where i kind of came from into october yeah just so it's relatable for everybody i mean have you noticed the flood <laughs> What flood? <laughs> right? I mean, it's not just in the States. It's also in Asia, right? In many places where, you know, flood is happening and people are displaced. And, you know, with the eclipse energy, of course, there's so much displacement happening to all of us. And whether it's physically, whether it's monetarily, relationships, professional, again, it depends where, where the energy hits in the chart. And, you know, as for me, um, the, the eclipse happening in my fifth and eleventh house, meaning that you know it's a house of leadership, a house of like being creative, building something not just by yourself but also collective. I personally have met so many different people uh, this month and the month before actually before it happens. Um, and so much is going on. You know, I, I just came back from Italy. I'm going to South Africa. I'm going to Singapore. Um. And and that's like I'm connected to an international community, and I'm getting getting to know more and more like-minded people who are on the same path, who are still trying to figure all of this out. And then there's so much collaboration happening, and this is very this is beautiful because the sign of Libra is really all about collaborating and connection. And of course, in in the the opposite sign of Aries is about can you be authentic and show who you are in the world, where you share your vibe out and then you attract your tribe in and create a community together, that will bring forth greater empowerment to each other. And um, basically, that is um, what I've been going through. And because of that, you know, I was I, I put myself in places of pressure, in places of like uh, I don't know if I can handle all of this, and I just kind of like figure out as I go. And what I've noticed as well is an expansion of my capacity to hold more tension, more stress, and become more resilient as an entrepreneur myself, as well as a spiritual mentor. Beautiful. And yeah. I do want to just add too that I just saw 
well, the first, I think the second week in October, there were also floods in Paris, in, in, yeah. in France. So yeah, it's hitting everywhere. And yeah. for myself, the current, and I, so you said it was Aries and Libra. So I'm thinking it was, is it my fourth and 10th house then? Your Aries and Libra, I believe. Yeah, yeah. It's the fourth and 10th house somewhere around your mid heaven. Okay. So you're going through this whole transition that's, go that's happening. Yeah, because the current that I had this, this past month was around business. So, you know, I started the month in one place with, um, you know, um, having a business to work with job. And then I shifted to another place with completion. And it was a, it was very, um, it was a quick shift, but it was very dynamic and it was very much like in the flow and there was nothing, there was nothing like left behind. It was just like, boop, going over here and then starting a whole new, um, new job and new uh, exploration experience. So that's how I really came upon my October. So it was really in, you know, my business area. So it was pretty quick too, right? You left a job and you get a new job on the same day, right? Oh yeah, it was like within a day or two, like done, yeah, that's, done. That's the that's the ad exact energy of the eclipse, and it's just like, poof, you know, it just happens without you yeah. understanding. It accelerates so many things, and uh, and it's a calling, you know, from the greater universe. And I'm glad we're talking about October right now because it's exactly, you know, a nice transition to talk about November, because you know, in astrology. In nature or in the universe, there's no such thing as boundaries. Boundaries are created by humans just to, so that we can contextualize and understand the world and, and the universe. Otherwise, it's just a pile of chaos, <laughs> <laughs> right? We, not, yeah. I mean, I don't think nature has its own calendar. Okay, now it's October, now it's November. Let's switch this, right? Even though we can tell that from the cycles and seasons and changes that's going on. But, um, but, the, but there's blurred lines, right? That is, it's not like October is this energy and then it's just like poof, change to November, completely different. So I think what's nice as well, you know, in terms of listening to the themes of the keywords is to, is to see how they gel together from one month to another and, and, and feel the transition rather than, oh, this is this theme, I forget about October, right? So I think it's nice yeah. to have that kind of like um, flow of understanding that nature works in such a way. Okay, so do you want to hear what the next one is? Yeah, sure. Let's go for it. Okay. Okay. So October, of course, was the keyword of current. And I'll just hold this up for all my, oh, I don't know if I can see. So that was the current one for October. Um, and again, that was, we've talked about water stuff. So the new one for November is the keyword of involve. 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 So I looked up what involve means just to make sure we have a definition. To include someone in something or to make them take part in or feel part of it. Hmm. And some key words for involve are align, doing, encompass, incorporate, and fun. Okay. So for myself, the energy that I, and I kind of tuned in a little beforehand is um, I saw a bullseye. And I've really got the feeling of being in action. So for myself, October was, you know, changing jobs and learning, learning, learning new stuff. And now it's that I'm learning. Now, how is that going to like involve that into like moving in action and being present and doing? And, and so for myself, it feels really good from current to involve. What about mm. for you, Chiron? So when I first hear the word involve, <laughs> I didn't think about inclusion. <laughs> I thought about inner evolution, you know, evolve, mm. but involve is right. It's like going within to evolve the, the, the darker shadow parts of who we are that we have not met or arm process so that we can liberate ourselves to feel that inclusivity and that connection of how are we connected as one humanity despite our differences. Right. I think it's also good to mention that, you know, it's election month for you guys. And it's, you know, 1st of November itself. It's already a new moon in Scorpio that colors the entire month. And it's Scorpio season. And um, there's a lot of dance between Mars and Pluto during that time. And it's, yeah, the ruling planets of Scorpio. <laughs> so there's a lot of shadow work, right? Mm. I think if you really want to include and align and be a part of, community and being part of connection with people 
I think there is a call for us to really look at ourselves first and and work on that mirror principle. You know, I was just speaking to my partner this morning. You know, she brought up a certain issue between she and her friends, and she was like, "Why is this happening, Karen? Well, maybe it's something about you rather than about them, and the way they treated you or think about you is probably more about them than about you. So, so you, you see, our shadows are intertwined with one another." But if we can evolve our shadows and bring it to the light, and lead from a place of love and and open it up, you know, into the into the space of healing, who knows what kind of deeper connection that we can have? I think that's the essence of Scorpio season. Ooh, so okay. First, I'll say I've got complete chills on that as you're speaking about it. So like full body chills and. What comes to me about, especially the election thing, and we'll, I mean, we'll talk specific in a minute about the, you know, the actual dates and that we'll share the energies, but the fact that there's so many people on both sides of the spectrum with this election and stuff that are, that are maybe un unwilling to look at their shadow stuff and are maybe um, hesitant to think that they have anything wrong, even though the, because the other side does. So it's really fascinating, honestly to, you know, think of what you just said and, and really um, contemplate how this is, how it's all showing up because there's more and more things like I want to say under the rug, but being pulled out that people are like, oh my, like that's how it really is or, but oh, so yeah, it's really going to be fascinating. So let's talk about specific dates for this, the beginning of the month. You said we have yeah. a new moon? Yeah, we have a new moon on November 1st. And, um, oh, it's actually on the first. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So exactly on the first that it colors the month, and during that time, Mars is already opposing Pluto, and it's going to be opposing it for uh, you know the next week or two, and the influences of Mars and Pluto will be impacting all of this. So let me just shine some light on this energy between Mars and Pluto because I mean, since Scorpio is the the you know the other ruling planets for Scorpio, you know. They are the lower and higher octave of each other, so they are, they kind of have that same energy. If you want to think Mars as like a rocket, and then if you add Pluto in there, it's like nuclear bomb, right? <laughs> yeah. So so you can tell the, the the different octaves of energy, and basically Mars represents our willpower, our defense mechanism, how we act upon things, but Pluto tends to show us something completely different meaning things that we have blindsided, something that we have pushed under the rug. So things from the shadow can come out. And the thing is that we can feel a lot of rage during this time, feeling deep sense of frustration of like, why aren't things working out the way they want despite all the efforts that I've put in and feeling really frustrated. And despite all the, you know, efforts that I have, especially when it's in a sign of cancer for Mars, it's that we can take things very personally. We can act upon our emotions and believe that our emotions represents our reality, right? And when we do that, we're going to project some shit that is within us onto other person and we can be violent in such a way. And Pluto will show us that if we do not honor our anger as a neutral human emotion and accept it and harness it to create it will bring destruction. It will bring violence. It will bring, you. we will end up hurting other people. So this position will show us that, you know, the way that you have been using your anger or your passion or your will is limited. And Pluto is here to transform that so that you can have a renewable energy, <laughs> right? In that sense to continue working on your purpose on the bigger dreams. So it's a sense of realignment because there's some level of self-destruction happening or we are destroying relationships and the people around us. So there's there's this humbling moment of like you gotta you gotta change the way you do things, the way you value things, the way you understand things. Otherwise, you know this energy will go against you. So to color the theme of that entire month, this it starts off this way, and like I said in the previous month, Mars is moving forward and retrograde, so it's gonna meet Pluto three times, and this is the first meeting, right? This is the first meeting and over the next couple of months, this is going to be activated in our consciousness. So, you know, there's a, definitely a calling for authenticity to be more of who we are and free and liberate and give ourselves full permission to show ourselves. But at the same time, be kind because everybody is struggling from something. Everybody is still figuring out how to be authentically who they are. 
so people are gonna make mistakes, right? So this is that feeling that is is bringing up, and we want to honor it rather than shy away from it or be afraid of it. Okay, so that is so exciting. You know why that's exciting to me, Chiron? Because the people that listen to this podcast or watch it on YouTube or whatever, we are all at a different um, resonance than just the Joe Schmo out on the street, right? So this really gives us and gives the listener an opportunity to accept what we're what we're sharing and and how does that work for yourself? So when you're working with other people out in the world, you know you can be at a at a an advantage and have an advantage over others because you understand what the energy is working, how it's, how are you working with it? And the fact that we've got all this Mars energy and it's going to be a little, I, I, the word volatile is coming to me, but yet we can harness that volatility to really, is that a word volatility? I don't know. <laughs> to our, to our advantage. I mean, that, that excites me so much. And um, so let me share a little bit about the first of the month is um, we're starting in the month in regrouping energy. So regrouping energy is a time of consolidation and putting things together before moving on. So it's kind of almost like a retrograde, right? Finding, but finding out exactly where you are so you know where you're going. So it's time of reflection, kind of, you know, what's, how things have been going. I think about like how things have October been going. What am I moving into in this new season, new month? It's also about learning or gaining insights through your experiences. And, you know, you and I talking about the different things that we experience in October, as well as the listeners out there just contemplating, okay, so what did I experience? And for myself being the new jobs and moving into this, you know, like, well, this Mars is hitting my Mars. We talked about that when I had my, mm -hmm. my yep. personal transit session with you that the Mars next, return, you know, yeah, yeah that it's, it's going to be kind of, and I, again, I'm like filled with excitement, but like, oh boy, <laughs> when Mars is hitting my Mars, holy moly, because then it hits my, um, what else? I also have Mercury right there, Mercury, you know, together. squaring your Saturn. Yep. So I, so for myself that just, I have to really notice how I come across with people and not be, and, and, you know, be a little more maybe reserved in some ways than not coming across angry. If something stirs me up inside, that's just what comes to me at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I want to continue to unpack that. It's beautiful that you say it's regrouping because new moon Scorpio, Scorpio is about turning within rather than not to be so focused on the outside. And, and, you know, with the political climate and, and everything is, everybody's on the edge. It's really good to turn within rather than being too focused on the outside because we are not seeing, like I said, from the previous month, our senses, our external senses, outer senses are not the truth. <laughs> it's real, mm -hmm. but it's not the truth. You are, we are basically choosing a certain perspective and basically using that as an evidence to prove a certain belief that's inside of us. Which leads me to, you know, actually be, besides the mass Pluto thing, this is actually a grand cross that's happening on November 4th and 5th, which is the election. So it's, it's a connection. It's a connection between Mars, Pluto, Chiron, and the sun. So that, and Chiron's in the sign of Aries and the sun is in the sign of Libra. You see the woundedness is, again, it emphasized the woundedness of our masculine energy, our ability to assert our will and our ability to act. On one spectrum, a lot of are in the freeze mode. We are depressed. We are overwhelmed. We are trying to avoid overstimulation of this thing. And then we stray away from our higher purpose of what we are here to be and do. While on the other spectrum, all of us are in the fight state. <laughs> we are right. fighting and arguing every single thing and we get distracted mm -hmm. from our purpose. So in either way, we are completely distracted and, and distraction is the number one reason why we are not manifesting the health and the wealth and the abundance that we have because we are so focused on the problems and the, in the scarcity and we think that in fixing this is going to get us there. No, it's not. Right. So there's some alchemy that we need to do, right? Involve, mm -hmm. but it has to include people. This is the time that we need to have those difficult conversations because expectations are not going to align just by you processing all the time within you. You have to speak to people. You have to talk to people. And it's going to be triggering. But how do you navigate that, right? How do you create safety and trust in the process of working the conflict out? And so that we 
we can create win-win-win situations and rise above and create more inclusivity and connection and and true understanding between each other because the sun is in Libra, right? It's really about how can we create rather than destroy each other because I think and I believe, this is my perspective, <laughs> that we're all heading towards the same mountain, that we want to be loved, we want to belong, we want to be free to be who we are, but can we do that in a harmonious way? And that is the invitation. That being said, you know, we're not going to achieve it right away. It's right. We're going to achieve it by making mistakes. So a lot of Absolutely. compassion needs to come true. For all yeah. And so I just want to share that, um, that regrouping energy was the first to the fourth, but on the fifth and sixth is family energy. Oh, beautiful. And yeah. So people, it's about people grouping together, a feeling of kinship with people united for a common goal. And also yeah, the larger family of mankind can stimulate the feelings and the family of energy is one of my favorite energies because it really, I feel very connected, very one with all. And again, that bigger picture. So it'll be interesting because on that day coming together with, you want this person to win or you want this person to win. And then, <laughs> and, you know, as, as chaotic as that situation usually is, there is a sense of, yeah, you know, coming together with people, right for a common goal for like something that we all want to move forward into. Yep, completely. And uh, I would like to mention also one thing that there will be Venus opposing Jupiter during that time as well. And um, it can go both ways. <laughs> it can create more, you know, extreme group energy of like me versus you, my group versus your group, right? Where people can feel more like, you know, opposed in their ideas or it can bring people together either way because Venus and Jupiter is really a beautiful energy of like, hey, can we find goodness in each other and love and understand the multiplicity and the diversity of like different perspective and opinion. You know, Jupiter in Gemini is good in that, is, is positive in that sense, but it's negative by sharing false news and this kind of things and and we believe it and not to mention that you know a couple of days later november 7 right is when mercury enters a shadow period and we are about to step into what we call mercury retrograde towards the end of the month wow that's big yeah and this is going to stimulate more debates online but again depends how you use the energy. Do you want to entertain those debates or do you want to use this time to be creative, to be collaborative and create something more powerful than actually trying to fix all those little details and judging people and whatnot? I think about Mr. Fuller, you know, I love his quote, is say that you cannot, you know, shift the existing paradigm by fixing it, but to complete, but to completely create something new so that the previous existing paradigm goes obsolete. And I'm just paraphrasing, right? So mm -hmm. this is the intention that we need to think about. What can I contribute rather than what can I take? Because it's, it's not about you. It's, it's about you connected to a collective. So something that I constantly remind people who wants to be heart-centered leaders in the world to lead from a place of love, then ask yourself, you know, what can you give? What can you create? What value can you bring to people's life? despite all that's going on and it depends how you feel during that day, you show up to your purpose nevertheless. And then try to navigate the, um, the water, so to speak, and, and be, like you said, involved in your own healing and then healing those around you and the, you know, the collective and the, and the world. So it really feels to me like, um, well, it feels like, again, just, you know, like what, what are we here to do? We're here to evolve. We're here to, to be, you know, to work in relationship with others, to really explore this place is, is, you know, um, interesting dynamic, <laughs> whatever level of consciousness we're at right now. I don't have any idea. Three, five, seven. I don't know what people are saying these days, but it doesn't quite matter. All that really matters is the fact that we're given these opportunities each month and each day, honestly, to, you know, to really step forward. And I know recently you did a, um, a share on your Facebook page and it was about the power of now. And I, it just really resonated with me. And I think that's a good place to really dive into for a few minutes because for myself too, I've been, I've been ex having experiences where I've been super present, like more present than ever before Chiron in the midst of all this chaos and people and, ex you know, and me feel, I, I can feel so much that power of just of the now moment and being present is so profound. Totally. It's the greatest currency actually. 
because when you're in the power of now, your focus and your attention span increases. When you do that, time dilates. You have more time. You feel that you have more time and you can complete more things and tasks are just done because you feel more present and you're not wasting time because you're not distracted. And when you have more time, you have more energy because you're relaxed. Your nervous system is like, yeah, I can get the energy flow in the body and the more you do and the more you're consistent in the power of now, you feel like the entire universe is giving you energy. And when you have more energy, you attract more abundance, more money, and, and you're able to invest. And this is why I say, you know, being in a now is actually a cheat code or a hack. I mean, the ancients have been saying this for thousands and thousands of years, right? But basically, it's, it's the key to abundance and connectedness. And, you know, to be involved is to be in the now. And I think also, and not buying into what, what everyone else is saying or what everyone else is experiencing, because you're having, we're having our own experiences. And so being able to step into the now and to be present. And so that like recently when I worked at Target, the first job I had early last month, I, I had moments where I was like putting away the cosmetic stuff, you know, little piece of cosmetics. And oh my God, like all of a sudden I felt spirit move in and I just felt the most present I have felt in forever because I was just not worrying about anything or concerned about it. It was just, I was in that moment doing what I needed to do. And it was so profound. I was, I'm, I mean, I, still to, to this day, it makes me go, wow, that was just phenomenal that, you know, those moments of clarity and those moments, like you're saying, when you're just so still in whatever you're doing that you have an expansive feeling. And that's exactly what I experienced last month. Yeah. You know, you, you, you just reminded me of an a story or really maybe basically a concept or an understanding that, you know, sometimes when we think that we, to live our life purpose, we think about something grand, something like amazing and it's like life changing, world changing, like a humanitarian thing. That being said, you know, I think life purpose starts by being in the now being you, wherever you are, whichever season in your life you're in. Like if you're a janitor today, can you do the best cleaning thing as you know, mm -hmm. as if it's your life, can you look forward to it? And then as you do, put away the cosmetics, can you do it as if it's your life? And as you write, can you do that as if it's your life? It's, I think it's about living in fullness. And I think, I, be, I believe Joseph Campbell have mentioned this, that you know, I, we are not looking for meaning in life. We are looking for opportunities to be fully alive. And um, it's, well so, it's so important during this month in November to really connect to that you know, rather than the what's being shared or not the drama that we see on social media and the news because we can be misguided. But if we can tune that out and reconnect to the higher connection to spirit, to love, I think there will be a lot of downloads because by November 15, there will be a sun Uranus opposition where insights, sudden awakening and aliveness about you know, who we think we are and who, what we think our life's supposed to be can open up for us. It's a moment of illumination and, and insight. And uh, especially when, when Mercury is traversing through Sagittarius, we can feel like, the, you know, about the greater vision and it's opposing Jupiter. And then it's like, and then it comes back to the retrograde and moves forward again. And sometime in December, we can feel this feeling like, oh, something big is, is downloading to our lives. There's a calling. But the question is, will you open your senses to, to hear it, to, 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 to accept the call? Because if we are too busy, we are not in the now, we're too distracted, then we, won't, we aren't, able, aren't able to hear it. So I'll, I'll do say watch out for November 15 to 18, you know, during this time where we can open up ourselves up to greater possibilities. And so the 15th, I'll just share the energy is ambition energy. Oh, on beautiful. the um, 13th to the 15th. Yeah. And the, so that energy focuses on your wants and inner desires. It's a strong feeling of commitment towards a direction. And then the next one, the 16th, you said through the 18th kind of that. Yeah. That yep, time yep. Frame. Okay. 16th to 17th is again, we have family energy that shows up again. So it would be a definitely interesting dynamic. And again, you know, like I shared in the beginning, it's good to to write these dates down and then to get the PDF I'm going to give you at the end of this um, in the show notes to, to just jot down and just take note of what, what happens during, especially this is interesting because like when you have the family energy early in November, well, the week before, how, what happened or how did you feel during that time frame with the family energy? 
And then when it came back around on this other transit, that's really big. How does it feel that time? What, what did you experience during that time? And then at the end of the month, there's one more set of family energy, the 28th uh, through the 30th. So that's one thing kind of cool about the energies is just kind of just noticing how you, how you feel through them. And then again, with the transits, what, what you like Chiron saying, you know, what is activated or what, what's being downloaded? What are you really tuning into during each of the time frames? Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. And to also note one thing that I have not mentioned that Mars is moving into Leo <laughs> on November 5th, but basically throughout all the way to this, the end of December, end of the year. But um, Mars will retrograde in early December, December 6th, right? So you'll start moving back and move back to Cancer at some point. But the, the, the nice thing, you know, you mentioned about ambition, you know, is as well during that day, uh, Mars, of course, is in Leo, right? And um, that that really brings up a lot of like, especially from November 5th onwards, okay, who am I? here to be who am i here to do and i think the word legacy comes up for me like and legacy is not just what you leave behind but what you set in motion for the future generation right so mars right. and leo has that energy if anybody who have a nato chart in mars and leo that's like that feeling of like there's some level of urgency i gotta put this out you know not for me for something larger than me and bigger than me so that there's some level of continuity of a uh, of something of your energy that's being passed down so despite all that's going on, you know, in terms of our political environment and, and life, livelihood, because a lot of it is going to be affected. And it's good to mention that, you know, in the axis of Scorpio and Taurus with the Sun Uranus position on November 15th, there's, there's going to be an economical shift, right? Mm -hmm. And and the issues about labor and money and and feeling disempowered, couldn't find a job, and this kind of stuff gonna, is going to start bringing up in people's consciousness. Um, but that being said, right again, you know, we need to remember who we, who we are here to be. And if you know it's time to leave and start your own thing, maybe it's time. Maybe you know it is also about following the energy, like you, Teresa. I think before we started this 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 episode, we mentioned about how inspiring it is for you to have that beginner's mindset and following spirit of like, you know what, I'm going to restart. I'm going to work at Target. And how many people are willing to let go of their ego just for that, right? Especially if, in where you're at and, and, and you have been putting that learner's lens on and to learn from spirit, to learn from who you're meeting from and understanding your environment. I think there's so much in there that you know if we trust that that calling you know even though you might not be the vision that you want or your or your vision board it could be the most powerful stepping stone absolutely and i think um for myself i look at jobs as instead of that their experiences and their opportunities and yeah so i and i fully believe that spirit puts me in the right places at the right moment so i can have these experiences and and then move to the next one, which I did, you know, what, a week and a half later. So, and then that's a whole different, you know, it's a corporate experience and it's, um, you know, at a different level of income and, and it's just a different variety of people. So it's, yeah, just being able to to move in that way and not hold on because that's what I hear from people that, that said, you know, like, gosh, I wish I could do that. I wish I had the ability to, you know, to let go and just move. And it's like, you know, I, for some reason, I, I'm just able to, it's probably because I, I do work closely with spirit and just, and trust, you know, okay. The, like it's hard for Tom, right? Cause he's a visionary. So he, his picture gets changed. Right. And you know, about being a visionary Chiron. So it's, it's it can yeah. be challenging, right. With that vision. And so I say, Tom, it's okay. Just trust me. Just trust mm -hmm. that I, I know what I'm doing and I'm working with spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. You know, I, I've I've learned to do to be more auditory in terms of like shifting away from the visionary energy to exercise my other parts of like my senses. Because the, the truth is that when we're an entrepreneur and we try to move towards our vision, that sometimes we don't know what's next. And sometimes we want we are just unable to see it. But you gotta just say yes when opportunity comes to you and you gotta figure out later. And sometimes the picture comes later. It's so interesting. Right. 
that I've noticed mm-hmm. is that when I say yes to something, then the picture comes, then the plan comes, then it's like, ah, okay, I got it. So it's beautiful to sometimes notice that way if, you know, noticing how our energy works and in relation to spirit can really help us and, and balance things out. Now I want to bring our attention to November 20th. Dun, dun, dun. November dun, dun, 20th. Dun, dun. Okay, what's on November 20th? <laughs> um, let's hear yours first before I, I reveal mine. Well, okay, 18th to the 20th of November is, again, regrouping energy. Okay. So there's a lot of of regrouping and family energy in this month. There is. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's two sets of regrouping. There's two, three sets of family. Mm -hmm. And then there's other energies around those things, but yeah. So two sets. Rightfully so, because Mars Pluto is about the right use of energy. Interesting. We will feel like we're exhausted and we are burned out and we are done. But when we can have that inner work, cleansing, cleaning, healing, you know, we can receive a new set of energy to move on to something else. The thing is that people people think that burnout is something that we overwork or we are exhausted. But it's more like we are doing things that we are not supposed to be doing. Overdoing mm-hmm. things that is not our calling burns us out. Doing things that makes us feel alive energizes us. So maybe this is that that point of like contemplation or reflection that we need to think about because uh, I think in November 20th, what I got here is Pluto moving back towards to Aquarius. And now Mars Pluto is going to have that Leo Aquarius axis and basically there will be some level of scrutiny in our leadership, whether it's outside of us (laughs) or inside of us. How are we leading ourselves, right? Are we just listening and pleasing expectations of our society or are we leading that is true to our heart? Because Pluto in Aquarius can be, Aquarius means collective, community, groups. We can get lost in expectations from what people might think about us, right? Fear of people's opinion and then and then we hold our Mars back and we might feel frustrated and we want to be ourselves. So there's some level of tension there, especially with the opposition that is uh, being experienced. Mm, interesting. Yeah. So we'll, we'll just say that there's a lot of stuff to be involved <laughs> through the whole month of November, right, Chiron? Completely, completely, right. And then just to tie things up, November 26th is, the, is when Mercury retrograde happens. And that's action, there's action energy, that 25th, 26th, 27th action energy. And that's the, that's the fastest type of energy that comes Interesting. in. So, Interesting. Yeah, it's very directed and moving and very, um, depending on what you're doing, you can get a lot accomplished during action energy. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think Tom mentioned this before. I think action energy does not always mean external action of of activity right is some level of internal work and oh yeah yeah anything you're working on Mm -hmm. maybe things are moving behind the scene and you're not doing anything much maybe you planted those seeds and things just started to 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 happen right yeah it could be spiritual it could be material it could be whatever you're involved in absolutely yeah yeah but i'll say you know especially when mercury retrograde season is here is to Go back and look at those unfinished things that we have not, that we put away rather than starting a new project. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'll say, you know, maybe the action that is there is to work on old things that is unfinished and to get it done, mm-hmm. to move things ahead, right? Mercury retrograde doesn't mean we go on a vacation and try not to do anything or make any choices or don't go anywhere. I don't think that's the right way or approach to think about Mercury retrograde, but it's really about reviewing all the things that we've done before so that we can truly move forward you know by 2025 i guess i I think we are in a preparatory state we are all preparing for something absolutely and i I like that the way you said that because there's oftentimes especially around mercury mercury retrograde people get like fearful and there's all this sometimes there's almost like a fucking curse i hate to say that but i mean literally it's like you know come on people i mean there's I mean, I guess it's just how the different perspectives and the lenses that people bring things through. And I'm 
you know, you hear all the time, oh my God, Mercury retro is coming. Well, no, it's not, it's not a bad thing. It can be a very supportive aspect that's coming into, like you're saying, to review, to, you know, kind of see what things need to be cleaned up or what things, how did things go for you at that point in time? And, and so just really understanding that way and that that's one aspect of how you can look at it versus the fearful, I guess, it, again, there's that polarity of, you know, the fear and the love, right? And then like being kind of in the middle, like, yeah, you can use it however, wherever you're at energetically, it will come in and you can flow with that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good to think about that. And especially what's happening is that Jupiter and Mercury is retrograde you know, at the same time. So I, I'll say, you know, watch out for false news and anything that doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. And really focus on the inner inner senses to find clarity and rather than jumping to conclusion. Uh, not to mention that while all this is, while this opposition is happening, Saturn and Neptune is squaring these two, these two planets widely right but it's mm -hmm. good to consider them into the picture because it's really about saturn is about credibility and looking for evidence and neptune is like it doesn't matter what you believe it's like hey the truth is the truth and the truth happens when truth happens you know right mm -hmm. absolutely it's like humbling it's like oh it's not what i thought it was it's supposed to be and you know i think the best evidence in life is some it's, it's our direct experience of something and um, and when it's paired with sciences and evidences that other people are experiencing the same thing, then most likely that it's the truth. The only no, the only thing that I know about truth is that it's it's never it does it doesn't change, right? Mm -hmm. Opinions change, beliefs change. Truth stand the test of time. It does not change over time. And for myself, right. what I know about truth is I can feel it. If it's, exactly. if it's truth for me, I can feel it in my core. If it's not, I'm like, oh, hell's no. It's a big HN. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sometimes, you know, when we can feel it in our core and then suddenly our perspective change. Right. Right? We can feel truth, but sometimes, and we know what that is, but sometimes our interpretation of that feeling might not be the truth, right? You get what right, I mean? Right, because there are concepts and beliefs, absolutely. And there's that, yeah, exactly. that inner work, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that inner work and also like um, we get lost in words sometimes and sometimes we can't explain certain things, but we can feel it. Yeah, absolutely. It's getting out of your head into your heart. Rocking that, right? Yeah. So involution, November, right? And involve, I think it's such a beautiful word play there. I don't know if it's intentionally made that way, <laughs> but it's beautiful. Well, I think you, you pulled it in that way. So I like it a lot. That feels really good. And so I look forward to um, going through November and having these experiences. And um, yeah, it's going to be, it's, it's, you know, I'm up for anything. That's why we're here, right, Chiron? <laughs> completely, completely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for November and, um, and, and what, what can unfold for us. I think there will be a lot of like um, opportunities coming for all of us who, especially all of us who have been putting the work down and um, things can expand, network can expand. I think, um, you know, great communities and relationships might be discovered by you or they discover you. And it's going to be a beautiful um, exchange between all of us. Love it. That's a great, I think that's a great place to end this episode. And and thank all the listeners out there who are listening in. And just a recap to that um, for yourself, if you want to get the calendar, it'll be in a PDF in the um, show notes. If you want to connect with Chiron, his link is in the show notes because he, if you would like to get an astrology reading or want to see some of his upcoming work, he's also got an astrology course he's going to be launching soon. There's some good stuff. So you can definitely check out ChironYing.com. It's down below in the show notes. And um, yeah, cheers, Chiron, until next month for sure. Until next month. And let's finish the year strong. Doesn't mean that if the year is ending, you know, we can still start something depending on where you are in your season. And, you know, do watch out for festive season and all those kind of stuff and all the triggers that comes with it. Um, you know, last but not least, seriously, just enjoy life. <laughs> Absolutely. All those, and all those triggers that are healing. So <laughs> with yeah, that, no, I'll just... the totality of it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So just remember that life is too short to not be enthusiastic about your unique journey.
To keep the enthusiasm going, please like, subscribe, or comment below. We would love to hear from you.